This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. We performed those ones the best. They resonated with us. I did not expect to hear that from a cover band that my former band teacher was in. So I'm mostly surprised that they're there at all. They're like, how did you get in here? <laughs> There's passion behind it because it's just something that, that is so powerful. Um, and I hope that I relay that to the kids that I work with. Teachers are often viewed by their students as school-only figures who don't have interests or hobbies outside the work they do in the classroom. For Parkway School District teachers Mike Steep and Matthew Wall, the difference between that perception and reality is a big one. And here's some proof of it. So what we're hearing is two educators who are also longtime friends. And when they aren't in the classroom, they're in the basement practicing 90s and aughts tunes to play on stage at evening shows with their band, Dad Bod. And today they're here in our studio to share the Dad Bod backstory and how it's come to have such a loyal following of teachers, parents, and former students alike. So Mike and Matt, Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. So let's start with the start of the band. How did the idea for this band come about, Mike? Um, the 90s and 2000s are always is music that Matt and I grew up with. So it's always music that we listened to when we were in high school and just things that we really, really enjoyed. And it was all just really, really good stuff. Um, and pre-pandemic, we had the idea of just kind of getting together and just jamming out on, on some tunes. And Matt and I... Uh, I've known each other since the second grade. We did high school, middle school band all through middle school and high school together. Mm-hmm. And he's a trombone player, and a, I was a trumpet player. Um, but for Dad Bod, he plays keys and plays trombone and many other things, and I'm the bass player. So kind of a different avenue of music stuff that, that we're used to doing together. But we've, we've made a lot of music together over the years, and it was just something that we wanted to experiment with and, and, and uh, thought we got pretty good at it and t- experimented with maybe trying to get a couple gigs and kind of went from there. Yeah. So, Matt, I mean, was this your idea? Who brought it up first, and where did this happen? Yeah, I think Mike maybe had the initial idea for it. Um, I had played in um, some bands in, in college, mm-hmm. um, and but I don't, I don't, Mike had really tackled, like, a, a rock band before, uh, and I think he was kind of had this itch. And I was, I was like, all right, we can, you know, I'll get together. We, you know, we'll play a little bit. And I didn't think it was going to evolve into anything besides just kind of hanging out and like playing some tunes. But, um, you know, we, we, we felt good about the way it sounded and just went from there. Yeah. So Matt, you just mentioned that in college you played in bands. Mike, did you do the same or was dad bought sort of a, a way to do a bit of dream fulfillment. (laughs) Uh, That's probably a good way to put it, because I I was mainly just a trumpet player all the way through college. Um, I picked up the bass um, after I got married, uh, and my wife and I had an apartment, and I had a a bass that had headphones that I could just play. Mm. Um, I just learned some tunes, and they're just fun. Uh, And I think that's when I maybe started messaging with Matt. I'm like, we we should get together and maybe play some rock tunes, because it was something that I'd never really done before. Mm -hmm. So was... 90s and aughts, I mean, you mentioned that this is music that you grew up with, Mike, but was that a, sort of the first thing that you all were thinking about playing when you started together, Matt? Well, not really. I uh, we w- When we thought like, all right, you know what, let's try to do this, let's try to make a band, we just kind of settled into like a pretty generic like cover band sort of thing and we're and we're learning songs that we you know we've heard out and about at you know various establishments um and so we had we had kind of a a longer list of things and as we started rehearsing and with the other guys in the band um we sort of realized that we performed those ones the best they resonated with us there was a little bit more authenticity to you know we knew what they sounded like we knew what it was supposed to feel like um, so we were finally just like, you know what, let's just do, let's, let's just focus on the stuff that, that we know. Yeah. So, Mike, was it really then about the vibe that you all were feeling together 
And then with your earliest audiences, I mean, whether they were like out in public or just playing for friends and family. Yeah, the vibe was was totally something that, that I think we all felt from from the from the get go. Um, it, it was interesting to see our first show that we ever played. We had a set list that Matt made up that uh, that resonated really, really well. Like this is songs that people I think maybe hadn't heard live in a while, mm-hmm. um, and were really fired up to hear us play. So that that was pretty cool. So that that can be kind of contagious too for us to like. All right, what, what are some other ones that that were just songs that we really loved back then? And then the list kept getting bigger and bigger. So mm-hmm. what is one of those songs? Oh, it'll be a good one. I mean, well, I mean, you did Stacy's mom. You you guys yeah. played Stacy's mom, and that um, you know that's a little later than the '90s. That's kind of those early 2000 period, um, like when we were in college and stuff. And I've always been more drawn to like the poppier side of things. And uh, Nick, who's our guitar player, mm-hmm. he's really into more kind of the alternative. He's because he plays guitar. Yeah. That's more of his jam. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that works real well. We're always able to come from different angles. It's like. Hey, I was thinking about this, and a lot of times he'll mention. You know, we learned a few songs at first where I was like, "Man, I don't, I don't remember this song very well from the '90s." <laughs> yeah, I don't, too. and then they just grow on you, and you just kind of like, "Oh, okay." And then there's some of them are like my favorite ones to play now, just because, like, it was it kind of snuck up on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And who are the other mem- members of Dad Bod? We don't want to leave them out. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the, the lead guitar player's name is Nick Gossett, and we went to high school with Nick uh, as well. So Matt, Nick, and I went to St. Charles West. Um, and then the drummer is JT Bradley, uh, and he was a he was been an awesome addition to the band because the initial idea I think uh, was to have a band of f- all four of us that all went to the same high school, mm-hmm. uh, and the drummer that we met up with with first we just kind of lost touch with so we found. Um, with JT as a mutual friend and he just he fit in so well and his basement is is a is a essentially a, a recording studio type place and okay. it's it's just been awesome and yeah. he's he's a fun guy and we just have a really really good time hanging mm-hmm. out together. We want to hear from you. Do you have a side gig or passion that's totally outside the work that you do to make a living? What does it add to your life and maybe to others' lives too? Give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. You can also send a, a tweet at STL on air, or you can email us at talk at stlpr.org. So the name Dad Bod. Who came up with that idea? So Matt, Mike. <laughs> so uh, as Mike mentioned, when we originally kind of started and were um, playing with the guys we went to high school with, we were trying to like come up with a name that somehow included that. Um, and then my wife was like, "Nobody cares about that." Like, in, like, <laughs> like you know, you might you might think that that's like uh, clever. She's like, "No, she's like, you just do something fun, like dad bod," and. I was like, no, I hate that. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we just tried to, so then we started like kicking around other names and then it just kind of kept coming back. Oh, dad, that's pretty good. Dad, well, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we played our, our first show, uh, and we kind of just, you know, we we're like, well, we'll just use it. And everyone's like, oh, that's a great name. We love it. And I was like, all right. And it, and it just kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. What were some of the others that you were considering, Mike? I don't think we even had any others because we, we weren't even sure if we were, if this was even going to take off, we were even going to get a gig. So dad bod was just kind of the joke. And then, we, hey, we got dad bod rehearsal tonight. Or we had, yeah, I mean, it, I don't know when it actually stuck and we decided that that's the name. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's gotten a good reception. Like pe- people know what that means. And, right. and three of the four of us are dads anyway. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it just kind of stuck. And I think that we're just going to hang on to that for a while. Yeah. What about your first gig then? How did that happen? I mean, did it sort of fall into your lap proverbially or was it something that one of you either Matt or Mike sought out or was it one of the other members well one of the hard things about getting that first gig is everybody no one wants to be your first gig (laughs) you know no yeah they're taking a chance on you because oh no we haven't played before you know we don't have a huge following none of that um luckily Mike had some contacts with our uh at, at Sky Music Lounge, which is where we played our first gig, mm-hmm. um, and so he was he was able to you know make that connection, and they they took a chance. Mm-hmm. How did you sell it, Mike? Uh, I don't really remember how I sold it. My my, my connection was so I, I teach middle school band at Parkway Northeast Middle School, mm-hmm. uh, and my first job was at Crestview Middle School in Rockwood. 
Um, and anybody listening who knows anything about Crestview knows that I work with a guy named Bob Wilhite who, who passed away in 2020. But he, he owned Sky Music Lounge, and I was I worked with him my first years as a teacher, and he opened that Sky he opened Sky Music Lounge by himself. Um, so I got to kind of see the inner workings of that place. Um, so I got to kind of see the ins and outs of that facility he was building, and he played in a, quite a few bands there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we were looking for our first gig, that was like my first thought to reach out to Sky Music Lounge and, and just see if that was something they'd be willing to do. And they took a chance on us, and, and now we're playing there every mm-hmm. every other month. So the connections really did make a difference. It, it sure did, yeah. yeah. So we have from St. Louis, John calling to to talk about something that he does in his off time. John, welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Thank you very much. Sure, go ahead. Taking my story. Uh, Actually, I work with a group of paleontologists. I'm a local practicing dentist that's been collecting rocks and fossils since I was five. And recently we found some big dinosaurs in South Dakota. And we're trying to develop a natural history museum. We take 20 to 30 students every summer to South Dakota to dig. And it's truly a life-changing experience, all ages of kids and adults. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. And what was it that prompted you to do this? That's, that's it. You know, when I was in high school, we started finding the Mastodon bones here where Mastodon Park is. And that kind of propelled me to want to do bigger, more, you know, do actual big Cretaceous dinosaurs. So it's uh, we've we really had fun with that and the real fun is seeing these, these students grow and how excited they are and how it grows their life they, they they know they can do something bigger than themselves which is really fun mm-hmm. john thanks so much i'll just kind of play music as well so we were loving hearing your show today oh thank you well john called us at 314-382-8255 that's 314-382 to talk tell us about your side gig or passion that's totally outside the work that you do to make a living. So, I mean, John talked about rock uh, in a <laughs> different way um, and about students. So in in the run-up to that first show um, and talking about, you know, doing things in public, did you all have any apprehensions about playing in public uh, because of your work as as teachers, especially in a time when, there's so much scrutiny around people in in your profession. Matt or Mike, whoever wants to take that. I, I've never really. I, I know leading up to that first gig, I I was you know hoping that I could get uh, you know friends and colleagues to come out and support. <laughs> um, so I wasn't terribly concerned. I, I think um, we are also at a 21 and over uh, mm, venue, so okay. I, I wasn't worried uh, about students either. Um, and knowing like, you know, that we're there in a different capacity than representing, you know, what we do on, uh, for, in our daily lives, I, I, th- I've never really felt like that I would be scrutinized. In fact, I've, I've gotten mostly just support from, uh, students and their families. Mm-hmm. So your shows are well attended by dedicated dad bod fans, some of whom are, as you've just mentioned, Matt, um, colleagues, now, when St. Louis on the Air producer Roche Hemmings went to your performance earlier this month, she talked with Ashley Winslow, who's a teacher at Parkway South High. It's cool to see them genuine. I was just talking about how they all look genuinely happy up there and they're living their best lives and just enjoying the evening and playing music from, you know, our lifetime growing up, our childhood. So we're all, a lot of us are millennials and this is the music we grew up listening to. So it's nice to actually go out and have music that we can relate to and we sang along to when we were little and also seeing the people we you know spend days with at school get to see them up there having their their best lives living their best lives so it's clear there's colleague support were some of your colleagues you know surprised that you were doing this when you started mike i don't think so yeah i don't think so i mean i I think some of them but by the time we had um maybe had a gig knew that this is something that i kind of just tinkered with on the side um yeah, I don't, I don't think they were surprised. I think they, they were more fired up just to come to, to check it out for the first time, and thankfully they've come back for a few more. Mm-hmm. And in speaking with Roche, Ashley had also said that dad bod shows are where all the teachers go. So it's a, a cool <laughs> spot and, and place to be. And it seems that, you know, seeing you being Matt and Mike on stage rather than Mr. Wall and Mr. Steep on campus, it just makes fellow teachers feel good. I mean, what do you make of that, Matt? Um, I, 
you know, it, we spend so much time during the day around young people um, living professional lives and, and doing our best to, you know, broaden uh, our students' horizons. And it's nice to have that space to be able to let down our hair a little bit um, and engage with each other in ways that don't involve talking about curriculum or, you know, the latest <laughs> professional development. <laughs> Uh, and so, you know, I love looking into the crowd and seeing, uh, you know, familiar faces and, and, uh, feeling that support and it makes, uh, it validates, I feel like what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So as we noted in the introduction, teachers are not your only fans. There are former students who are jamming out at your shows too. And our producer Roche is one of them. And she spoke with Christina Tran, who's someone you taught, Mike, uh, and, Duncan Saxon, someone you taught in the past, Matt. Now, Christina told Roche she's been going to dad bod shows for over a year. At first, it was a little weird because I hadn't seen him in so long, but to see him perform and do his thing, it was a lot of fun. And why do you keep coming back? Because you could have just gone to a show a year ago and been like, okay, that's fine. But like, why do you continue to um, listen and watch and follow dad bod? a year later. Um, they're just a really good group and even though it's just covers that they're playing, like they they really engage with the audience and put on a show that all ages can enjoy, especially if you're into 90s and 2000s music, like it's just a really fun show. Duncan Saxon had his first dad bod experience earlier this month and was impressed by the band's range. I mean, just the amount of musical talent up there, switching between genres. I, some of the songs they're playing, I did not expect them to play, I'll tell you that. But it, it was very, very good. I liked it. What songs did you not expect them to play? Or genres? I would say that Regulate, I did not expect to hear that from a cover band that my former band teacher was in. But uh, I'd say, yeah, there were some of the rap... Um, well, Kid Rock. I mean, I loved it all. I liked the, that they jumped between country, rap, rock. It was awesome. So both Christina and Duncan, they mentioned their surprise at seeing their former teachers in an environment outside the classroom. But what has that experience been like for each of you? Like, is there an initial awkwardness or, oh, I did not expect to see them sort of feeling that comes with seeing former students at your shows, Mike? I, I think originally it was, I wouldn't say awkward is the right word. It was surprising because it, it's happened a couple more times. So Roche is also a former student of mine, right. which is just super cool that, <laughs> that she was able to set this up for us today. Uh, and, Chris, and her and Christina came to that show together. And I've seen a couple other uh, former students as well at, at, at other shows. And I, I don't know that they're coming and they they approach me in between sets or after the gig and it kind of just t takes me back for a second because it then uh, you know makes me feel quite a bit older than I feel like <laughs> I am uh, that I have students that are able to get into places like this or former students of mine but it, it's it's been super super fun it's been always been uh, very positive and just su su such a cool thing to see uh, people out there just kind of hanging out and, and taking the time to come see us and, and to come say hi to me. So mm -hmm. so between graduation from high school or, or like middle school and being 21, I mean, are there people that you have seen who are former students, Matt, that you don't recognize? Like they have to tell you. Well, uh, not really, because I haven't been, I've only been um, in Parkway since like late 2018. Mm -hmm. So I'm mostly surprised that they're there at all. I mean, Duncan had to have only he's only been he's only been 21 i gotta imagine for a couple months okay <laughs> so i was more surprised to be like how'd you get in here and he, and he was like i'm 21 now i was like whoa that uh so I, the the few students that i've come across i i'm just always like amazed that that they're, <laughs> that they're even in the building yeah um so it was fun to see him and a couple of the other uh band guys he brought with him at, mm -hmm. at that at first gig yeah so there's a, a rather unkind and I would say unfair saying uh, from a George Bernard Shaw play that gets thrown about, and it is those who can do and those <laughs> who can't teach. Now, the two of you are, in fact, doing and doing so in a way that makes your teaching better. Taylor Hawkins is the choir teacher at Parkway South High. Here's what he had to say about the classroom benefits of, Matt, your being in dad bod. Being in the music Education industry, you know, 
it's uh, it's always like a crapshoot. You don't know kind of where people's backgrounds are from and like how they're uh, how they apply with their knowledge and experience to the job. And so, having Matt be in this band and seeing him perform, it's like oh, I, I have a better respect and understanding of how he approaches his education and like how he approaches teaching music to kids because he has real world ex- real world experience. And uh, then it's like better for me too, where the the colleague to colleague kind of relationship is built and stronger because now that I know kind of what he has inside of him, what he's capable of, that that helps me. So we also heard from Duncan Saxon's mother who spoke about the benefits of her son seeing what a teacher can do outside what they do in the classroom and specifically that uh, you know, that there are things that you could do that are just about you. So for each of you, I mean, is there something to just playing music for yourself that has nothing to do with teaching, that just makes you a better person all around, and then ultimately leads to, like, you're being a happier person as an educator? Mike? I, I, I love a saying that says, when, world, when wor- words fail, music speaks. Um, and that's something that I care with me all the time. So any, it doesn't really matter what type of music that I'm playing. Um, there's passion behind it because it's just something that, that is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that I relay that to the kids that I work with. Um, just It doesn't matter what kind of music that you're working on. And, and the kids at my school know that I, I don't advertise the band that I'm in, but we talk about it every so often. And we I just kind of give pieces of advice and, and uh, anytime things like that come up, but it, it's a it's a really powerful connection. M- music can connect people in in really really meaningful ways. Mm-hmm. And in the last minute, how about you? Yeah, I, I, for me, music is a, an escape. Um, I love the fact that it's something I can do by myself personally to kind of reflect and just get lost for a moment and almost meditate. Um, but then also share with you know lifelong friends and uh, you know experience it in a different way. It's uh, you know it's a real great just. Um, release for me. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Wall and Mike Steep are Parkway District teachers and founding members of Dad Bod. Matthew and Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having Thanks. us. And as we close today's show, here's Dad Bod's cover of Two Princes by the Spin Doctors. <laughs> This episode was produced by Roche Hemmings. Audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. The Gateway brings you the day's news each weekday from around the St. Louis region and the state capitals in Jefferson City. Our schools are accredited. We don't need this bill. And Springfield. How many more years must pass before lawmakers see time is of the essence? I'm Abby Larico. Join me each weekday for The Gateway on the STLPR app or wherever you get podcasts.